All right. All right. For those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Forrest. And welcome to It's Quest Time. Now, before we get going, I'm going to ask if you guys could do me a big favor and not send me any text while I'm up here. Because when you're up here and you're hosting, right, and you're moving around and all of a sudden somebody sends you a text that's like hitting a wall. It really is. It's very uncomfortable. It's like a boom. There's a wall right in front of you. Just a wall of text. And it can really throw you off. So if you can hold those off to the end of the event, I'd very much appreciate that. Also, if you guys can stay off the stage area here, this way nobody blocks its big display behind me, right? And it gives me a little bit of room to move around and do the whole hosting thing, right? Now, also, if you guys uh, will notice that there is a microphone icon at the very top of your menu wheel, it looks kind of like, oh, the slide's not changing. Well, it's, it's very bad. There we go. There it goes. All right, cool. Uh, it looks kind of like this right here. Now, when that's clear, we can hear everything that's happening in your environment, right? So we've gone ahead, we've turned that to red, and this means they're muted. So if somebody comes in your space and says, hey, are you still on that thing? Feel free to answer them because we're not going to hear that. Likewise, if you have like a barking dog in the background, you're not going to face social ruin by becoming known as the avatar that suddenly started barking during its quest time, right? So we spared you that, right? But now just because you're muted doesn't mean you can't participate, all right? You're going to notice that there's a pink cheek smiley emoji in your menu wheel. And when you press on it, it opens up your emoji panel right in front of you. And if I say something really deep and powerful and meaningful and it starts to build up inside you, you can just let it out and let it flow just like that. Maybe... I got some backup dancers backstage, right? And they come out and we break into It's Quest Time, the musical, and you guys can throw up the applause that I live for, and I can take a moment to drink it all in because it feels good, right? Also, if I ask you guys a yes or no question, you can say yes by smiling like this. You can say no by frowning like this, right? Or if I say something funny, you want to show me that you're laughing, you can use the silly face emoji just like this. And then there's this thing. This is my the most distracting of all the emojis and we're only going to use this not to ask questions we will be taking questions and comments at the end but we're only going to use this in the event that something goes wrong right so if i'm up here and i'm moving my hands around you're like wow that guy really looks like he's talking but i don't hear him right that's the kind of thing i'm going to want to know about or maybe the moderators have had enough they've seen one it's quest time too many right and they decide they're going to burn down the set that actually happened i'm up here i'm talking i got fire behind me and everybody in the audience is going look behind you right you know, like that kind of thing, because that's our agreement. You guys got to help me out. That's like our sacred bond. This is our pact, right? Now, you can press the X in the middle of the emoji panel, and that'll make the emoji panel go away, but it's a good idea to leave it open during events like this because, well, you know, it gives me feedback. It lets me know how I'm doing, but more importantly, it lets the people around you know what you're experiencing, right? So the person next to you starts going like this. That means they found something funny, right? And you may not agree. You might be like, whoa, I'm not, I don't agree with all that at all. I'm going to go stand over here, and you can do that. This is VR. Maybe not right here because it's on the stage. And part of our sacred pact, part of our bond is that you guys were not going to come up on the stage unless you guys were invited, right? Okay, so cool. We got that down. All right, awesome. Now, Quest Time is an event for Oculus Quest users, right? Uh, you know, but all are welcome. So if you're on another device, feel free to hang out. We're going to have some fun and you may pick up some useful information that helps the growing Quest community in all space because there's a lot of new Quest users coming in all space each and every day. And maybe you guys can give me an idea you know, of how to head out, right? So maybe, uh, let's see, how many of you are on a quest right now? If you're on a quest right now, throw me some hearts up or put your hands up because you can, right? Anybody on a quest right now? Let me see. Wow, that's a lot of you. Excellent. How many of you are new quest users? Any new quest users today? Oh, wow, that's good. That's what I like to see. These are my people. All right, let me see. How many of you are new to Allspace? Any new Allspace users? All right, welcome to Allspace. I think you're going to enjoy it. We've got a lot of cool stuff to do in here. That's cool. How many of you guys switched over from an Oculus Go? or thinking about switching from an Oculus Go. Anybody? Any former Go users in here today? Well, the number gets smaller and smaller every week. All right, cool. Good to know. All right, everybody. Uh, so give me some idea of head, how to head out here. Now, when I was waiting for my quest to arrive, see, I used to be on an Oculus Go. And on an Oculus Go, you have one controller, so you only have that one hand, right? And I grew up in Brooklyn, so I was used to, I talk with my hands a lot. I'm used to expressing myself with my hands. But on an Oculus Go, all anybody saw was my hand going like this, and I didn't feel like I was expressing myself as fully as I could. So I couldn't wait to get that hand so that I could do things like this and move my hands around, right? But, you know, while I was waiting, you know, I, when the device finally arrived, I took a good look at the controls, and I was like, you know what? Those are a lot of buttons. Right? And what I like to do is I like to make sure everybody's familiar with the controls. Now, listen, I know you guys got the basics down, right? If you're, you know, you move the left thumbstick, you move around like this. You move the right thumbstick, you turn in these circles. And when you combine the two, you get these big elaborate circles that make my presentation so much more dramatic. Come on.
on everybody going to these big dramatic circles like this because when I look out in the audience, it's going to look like you guys are ballroom dancing. Let me say, oh, wow, that's fancy. Very nice. Very, I always say I wish you guys can see this, and now you can. If you go to our YouTube channel, right, you'll have a chance to see this when we put it up in a couple of weeks. If you want to turn around and feel all space famous, you stand on the rug so you'll show up there, right? Uh, we got uh, Carito on VR. We've got Kaz222. We've got somebody moving around. We've got TNT moving around really quick in a great shirt. Uh, we also have Sammy. We also have, uh, let's see, we have Turbo. Well, Bobo, sorry. And sometimes reading those names, I tell you, you got to do them quick. All right. But, uh, yeah, we have a lot of people in here. So come on in all space, YouTube. I think you'll enjoy it. All right. Cool. All right. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to start out with here, right, is your grip button, right? Now, your grip button's really cool. It's right here on the side of the controller, right here, and the other side of the controller. You're going to use this to interact with your environment. It's how I'm working this laser pointer right here, right? Also, uh, you know, you'll be able to grab items in the world editor. If you've got the world beta building program, it's not easy to say, but it's easy to do. You can build worlds with your own two hands, right? You know, also like, uh, you know, got the skyward, those bottom rockets, those uh, fireworks and stuff, right? Also, you got these basketballs. Go ahead and grip on those if you need some practice. If you've never gripped anything in all space before, just go on and grab a couple of these, throw them around a little bit. You know, really get a handle on that, you know, or, you know, or grip on that. Yeah, yeah, because it's the grip button. That's what that makes sense, right? All right. Now, when if you're having like a room scale experience, you're going to notice from time to time that uh, when you walk out past your main menu, you're going to notice that's the time people tell you, hey, open your main menu. And you're going to be like, uh, where is this thing? And you're going to look all over for it, right? And you're not going to see it. And then, you know, for some reason, it's always behind you, right? Uh, you know, and this can get old pretty quick. So it's important to remember that on an Oculus Quest, your main menu is in your hands at all times. All you have to do, and you can try this now, if you press the flat button on your left controller on the bottom right there, right, this is going to open up your main menu, right? And what I do, like, you don't have to do this, but I just think it's cool, is I flick my wrist out like that when I press the button, and now my menu open i'm like oh yeah so i have choices on my menu and if i flip my hand out again and press that button my menu's closed you don't have to do the wrist flick i just think it's cool all right so i'll give that a try and see how that goes all right also you have on your uh, now listen i know this is a lot of buttons right but some of these buttons do the same thing all right you have this select button here and your right trigger and if you have your left pointer enabled through your main menu this select button on your left controller they all do the same thing if i hold down my right trigger right now and you guys can do this too right? Move your arm through the audience. You're going to see that's Terry and that's Hummingbird. You get, and just move your arm around. You'll see everybody's name tag appearing above their head. That's how I know everybody's name so quickly. That's how I know that William is cool. I'm not just saying that William's cool. I mean, he probably is, but that's his name. All right, cool. Let's see what else we have here. All right. Now, also, when I first came in on the Oculus Quest, I went to the campfire. Check it out, right? And, you know, I felt good. I was on a new device. I felt like I was walking on air. And then I noticed all the avatars around me were suddenly like much shorter than I was. And I'm like, what's going on? And I look down and I find I'm floating this high off the ground. Maybe somebody's willing to help me out by like lifting up in the air a little bit. You can just sort of scoot down your chair. There we go. Uh, TNT. Now, TNT, press down on your left thumbstick. Show everybody what happens when you press down. All right, press down. Boom, just like that. Now, let's uh, Wu Chi San, give it a try. Press down on your left thumbstick. Boom, like that, right? So, what happens is that's called recentering. So, if you feel that you're too tall or you're too short, you just press down on your left thumbstick like it's a button because it is, and you'll, you'll find that you're recentered and you'll be more comfortable. Now, the thing you have to remember, though, is that move is attached to your head. So if you're looking down when you do it, you're going to notice when I do it, I kind of pop up a little bit, right? So now my feet are off the ground, right? I understand we're getting new avatars next week, and we're not going to have any legs, so I'm wondering how this is going to work then. But, you know, without legs, how do we know, right? But if what you want to do is you want to look straight ahead and then press that button, and then boom, just like that, you're nice and centered. It's very comfortable. So if you feel too short or too tall, this will take care of that, all right? Let's see what else we got here. Uh, also... On your left controller, you have this trigger button here, right? Now, this, if you're walking or flying, is going to make you go faster, just like that, right? So I can run down into the audience, right? Maybe we got to get together here. Everybody make a giant circle, everybody. make it in, Unless you're getting dizzy. You don't want to do this if you're getting dizzy. But we can make a giant circle, everyone, right? Everybody go around and make a hurricane. Maybe we can make it rain. Maybe we can make a typhoon, people. All right, I'm going to go back on stage and see how you guys are doing. Don't stop. Don't stop unless you're dizzy. I want to see how this looks. I want to see how this looks. I can't get up there. There we go. All right, let's see. Oh, okay. That's not a circle at all. It's really not. It's kind of like, it's kind of oval though. It's circle-ish. All right, that's what I'm gonna give you. Sometimes it's a figure eight, but this week I'm gonna call that an oval. All right, very good people. That's awesome. Is anybody dizzy yet? Because you know, if you're dizzy, you should probably stop. But this is just fun to watch. See one hand going up there. Okay, it can take a while to get used to VR, and actually, we're gonna be covering that in just a minute. Show you guys what to do if you get dizzy. But you know what? Running around like that, you know, uh, like that brings me to this other point here. All right, now check this out. On your right and left controller, you've got this teleport button here. And I'm hoping you guys are in a line dash teleport because it's a fun transition, right? It makes you feel like you're flinging yourself across the room. If everybody joins me up along this wall here, right? If you hold down your right teleport button on your right controller and aim at the floor, you're going to see a tar teleport target circle appear on the floor below you, right? And then if you hold it out 
and aim across the room. As soon as you let go, boom, you get thrown right across the room. Everybody teleport all over me while there's still time. You can do it. I believe in you. All right. Now what you want to do is press down on that left teleport button. And when you do, you can aim at the floor. Wait, wait uh-oh. My left teleport button's not working. What's going on? This is weird. Uh, it's never happened before. Okay. Very strange. All right. Has everybody got their left teleport button working? Because mine is like not. Well, that's odd. Okay. Apparently there's something going on with my controls. Usually, if you press down on your left teleport button, this could be due to the update. You know, I see other people are flinging across. Another thing you can do, and apparently because I'm having a controller issue, this won't work. But if uh, you guys can try it, if you like, if you press down and you aim at the floor and you make an X with both teleport buttons, right, what you'll find is you zig and then you zag, right, which I can't do right now because my left teleport button is not working. It may be part of the uh, latest alt space update. You know, they do that to keep us on our toes. I know it. They didn't tell me. All right. Well, another thing you can do, which this I will be able to join you guys with, is if you hold down that accelerator button to move quicker, you know, and you face the stage here, if you go backwards and teleport at the floor, you'll be doing like the alt space moonwalk, right, which is pretty cool. I try that. I hope that's not a copyright violation. That would be bad. Another thing you can do is one time you may have noticed I come into the audience a lot, right? And uh, another thing you can do is one time I was down here and I had the audience kind of surrounding me a little bit, right? And I had to get it back up on stage. I don't know why I never thought to do this before. I mean, but you'll always learn new stuff in all space. And then kind of on reflex, I went like this, right? Over my arm, right? So you can teleport backwards. It works with your left hand too, but right now my, my left hand is not teleporting. It's, I don't know, it's weird. Yeah, it's very strange. Anybody else having that problem? You know, anybody else not being able to teleport with the left hand? All right, I see one hand going up there. Wuchi san having the same problem. It might be part of the update. We're probably changing our settings. I'll look through it after the event's over and see if I can come up with an answer there. All right, but uh, let's see. Another thing, you know, actually, when I first started messing around with this stuff, I was at the Universe. Back then, it was held in a very large world, right? And when the event was over, I walked up to the edge of the, you know, edge of the world to look, and I walked a little bit too far, and I started to fall, right? And as I was falling, I looked over, and I saw this cliff, right? And I held out my teleporter. I aimed at it, right? And boom, I was thrown right on the cliff to safety, right? Now, you know, you can't get hurt in old space, but I saved myself from respawning. And in this moment, I knew I was finally starting to get a handle on the controls, and you will too. It only takes a few days to about a week or so to really get used to it. And there's going to come a point where you don't think about what you're doing. Like, if I say, hey, everybody, look out that window right there, right? I don't think about how I'm pointing. I just do it. And the way I'm doing this, if you guys hold down your grip buttons, right, and everybody give me a Brooklyn hello. Go like this. Give me a Brooklyn hello. How are you doing, everybody? Just like that. Yeah, there it is. Very cool. Now, you can put these together and make the old space logo. Hold it up high. Show me some old space pride. I like that. Nice and high. Oh, that's nice. I love seeing that. That's cool. Now, twist them together like that. And you can make a picture frame, right? Like that. Now, how cool would it be if, like, you snap your uh, index finger on the trigger? You see, like, you make like, a little snap motion. How cool would that be to take, like, screenshots like this, right? That would be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? All right. Cool. What else can you do? Now, if you're holding your grip and your index fingers down, you'll get two thumbs up like this. Tell me I'm doing a good job. Be like, good job, Michael Forrest. Or give me two thumbs down. Maybe it's not a good show, right? You're like, I don't know. I expected more of you, Michael Forrest. Maybe you'll do a bit of both. It's kind of so-so. You're like, yeah, I've been here a couple of times. It's kind of so-so. I've been seeing this a lot lately. I don't know what it means, but it's cool. All right. It's very cool. All right. Another thing you can do is if you touch your thumbs to the buttons or to the thumbstick, your thumbs will go down. You can kind of combine this into a cool dance move. All right. I'm told this is not as cool as it feels. I like to do it. I think it looks neat. All right. Now you're going to find too, like if somebody's doing something you like, right? Somebody's doing a gesture like that, that you like, the best way to pick this stuff up is by copying them. All right. And that way you make it your own. Like one of the first quest times we ever had, a bunch of people came up to the stage and they started going like this. And I started doing it back. And then the whole audience started doing it. Right. And it was cool. It was, I've never seen it before. It's kind of like a bird, right? You know, and I just thought it was neat. So, you know, this is the best way to pick this stuff up. It's just by copying, mirroring people's gestures. And after a while, you won't even think about what you're doing. You just be like, hey, look out that window. You know, even though there's nothing to see yet, there will be at the end of the event. All right, let's see. What else do we have here? Now, um, one of the best ways to leave all space, right, if you have to, like maybe somebody comes in your space and says, hey, dinner's ready, right, something important like that. What you're going to want to do is on your – and don't do this now because if you disappear, I'm going to feel it. I'm going to take it personally. It's going to make me sad, right? What you can do is on the right control, you've got this flat button here. Right? You got to think of this like it's an eject button, all right? And when you press it, you're going to be given a choice to quit or resume, right? If you press quit, it's going to close the app. But if you press this flight, like, you know, by accident, like, say you're at the universe, you're dancing around, and all of a sudden you press that flat button by accident, what can happen is you're like, oh, no, I pressed the button by accident. Now, if you press resume, you're going to come back right in all space. Nobody's going to even notice you were gone. You usually won't destroy you with her awesome admin powers. Like, how dare you leave my event? You know, that's not going to happen. You're just, you know, going to come right back in to keep on dancing, right? And it's okay. All right. But it's the best way to leave all space if, you know, maybe dinner's ready or it's good to use in the event that something's gone horribly wrong. All right. Let's see. Here we go. All right. So what I mean by this is let's say that, you know, you're, you're in all space, you're having a good time and you turn your head, right? And when you turn your head, the whole world moves with you, right? That's not right. You start to feel really dizzy. 
So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit that eject button, get out in a hurry, and restart the app by hitting quit, and then restarting the, the logo. Right Now, uh, the logo, you know, the app. Okay, yeah, there you go. I don't know why I said the logo. All right. But uh, another thing, too, like let's say you turn your head one time, right? Like, and you look at the edge of the screen, it's a black void. And you're like, uh-oh, there's a black void. Right? See a hand going up, we might have a problem there. You see any other hands? Something wrong with the void, something going on there. Okay. Not seeing that. So we're pointing up here. Okay. You know, all right, well, hang on. Let's see your hands going up. I'm going to unmute everybody because I didn't agree with this. Is there a problem, DNT? Just uh, unmute and tell me what's up. Get your hand up there. Coming in and out. Oh, no. All right, you guys, and this actually happened a couple times in the past few weeks. I think it's got something to do with the update. I'm going to re enter the space. Apologize for the technical delay here, but I will be right back. So just give me a moment to uh, clear my voice out here. Here we go. All right, that happened last week too. How's my voice now, everybody? We nice and clear? We good? Yep. We good? Everybody get a thumbs up. All right, cool. Thanks for letting me know. I appreciate that. You guys are keeping up your end of the deal really well. That's awesome. All right, let me see. We'll get everybody muted again. There we go. Uh, oh, actually, somebody else. Okay, cool. Thanks, moderators. Okay, so here's what we're doing. Uh, let's say that, you know, uh, you are you turn your head, right? And when you do, you see a black void all around the edges and your friends are all frozen in space, all dramatic like that. And you go to press that eject button and nothing happens, right? You're going to be like, Michael Forrest lied to me, right? That's not what's going on, right? What can happen is sometimes your apps, not just all space, but all of them, sometimes they'll freeze. And for this, you're going to need to restart your headset. Now, when I first got my Quest, right, what I did was I would actually take the headset off to restart it. Now, if you're playing with your devices plugged in, right, this can be a little bit difficult because, like, uh, occasionally if, the, if it's not a charge cycle and the light's not turning on, it can take a little while. And if you're in a rush, right, you can get the feeling like your headset is broken. So it's a good practice to know how to re, you know, restart your headset while it's still on your head. And the way to do this is if you take your index finger and you swipe it all on the right side of your device, you can feel that raised up power button, right? Now, what you do is you take your other index finger and you kind of press against the other side. This way you squeeze them together and you'll press that button down. I like to look down when I do it like I'm in a deep concentration pose, right? And after about four seconds, you concentrate so hard that your avatar disappears and you get plunged into the darkness. About 10 seconds go by and you start thinking, why did Oculus make this take so long? I don't know. 15 seconds go by, you know, you start thinking about friends you haven't seen in a while. You wonder how they're doing. 20 seconds go by, you start thinking about life. You know, you start thinking about the big questions, right? And all of a sudden, out of the darkness, the Oculus logo emerges like the bat signal. And then when it starts to pulse, what you do is you take your hands away like that, and your device will start normally, right? Now, this is going to take care of most of the problems that you're going to have in all space and really all of the other apps on the Oculus. Uh, this is really going to really take care of things and prevent, you know, these kind of issues you know, when they happen. This is the best way to solve them. However, sometimes something more serious might be going on. Like one time I came out of all space, right? And there was a message that said, Oculus Home is closing. And there was a blue button that said, okay, it was the only choice. So I said, okay, right? And what happened was, now if this happens now, I'll just restart my device. That's a good tip because what happened then was I said, okay, and then the screen just said loading. And I waited and I waited and two minutes go by and I'm like, this is taking a long time. So keep concentration pose and the device restarts and it still said loading. And I'm like, what's going on? So I came out, you know, and out of VR, and I asked my good friend Google about it. And Google said a lot of people were having this problem, right? And the best thing to do is a factory reset. But you got to keep in mind, right? The re factory reset is great because it's going to put the device back the way it was the day you got it. But you have to remember that if you have any photos saved, right, you're going to lose those. You're going to have to reinstall all of your apps. The good news is you won't have to pay for them again. But you are going to have to, you know, re-download them and reinstall them. And you're going to lose all of your preferences. And to show you that this is serious business, you might even lose your Beat Saber scores. Okay? So it's very serious. All right? So only use this in an emergency. All right. Now, uh, let's see what else we got here. Now, uh, yeah. the uh, If you're here today, you have done the tour. So you've danced with the robot. You played with the blimp. You had that. That was fun, right? Uh, so you're familiar with your Guardian system, but you may not be familiar with how to use the Guardian system to your advantage in all space. Remember earlier I mentioned that everybody, you know, if they were getting dizzy, Right. One great way to deal with the dizziness in VR, especially if you're new to VR, is hold your hand up to your face like this. Right. And take a good look at your hand. Right. Until the dizziness passes. And when it does, slowly take your hand away and take in the world around you. This can really help the dizziness pass if this happens to you. But you can also use your guardian system for this purpose as well. Now, if you're messing around with your guardian system, you pay, listen, be very, very careful. You don't want to injure your, you know, you're, you want to injure yourself or damage your device, right? Because in all space, a lot of times you'll see somebody, they're walking along and they look like they're having a good day, right? And all of a sudden, bam, they hit a wall just like that, 
right? And you know, that's not a good day right there, right? So you, whatever you want to do, especially if you're new to viewers, you want to lead with your hands. And when you get up close to the edge of your guardian, you'll know how that grid appears, right? When you get to the edge of it, when that happens, keep in mind, like if I walk up to my real world wall right now with my hands out and that grid appears, right? I can still move my thumbsticks. This will allow me to move my avatar around in VR, even though I'm standing up against the wall in my real world environment, right? And what I can do is I can line it up with this display here. And this will create kind of like a reality anchor that will keep me you know, sort of balanced, right? And then what I can do, right, is I can, you know, step back and take it all in, right? So, oh, yeah, that's nice. That, that, that works really good. Oh, no, I've fallen off the stage. I'm in the audience. Now, if you guys come up to me and you just mess with me, like stick your hands in my face, try to make me dizzy, kind of give me the worst you can. Oh, there we go. All right, yeah, let's see how we go. All right, now, you can hear I'm not really messing up my words or anything like that. You guys really aren't even trying, all right? Usually, it's a lot more rough than this. You know, you got to concentrate, you know, to get through it. But you guys are just making it super easy. Because as long as I can see that display, I'm completely fine, right? You, as long as you don't block it in any way, I can still see it. Because it's a huge display. I can see through your fingers, all this. Kind of, I don't know what it's going to be like with the new avatars. I really don't. But so far, this is no problem. Another thing you can do, right, is if you have, like, a desk or a table in your environment, you can line it up with the edge of the stage here, just like that, right? You can do that. That way, and this is going to make you feel more connected to the real world. Kind of think of it as kind of a reality anchor, all right? And this will kind of make you feel a lot more stable if you have something in the real world that you can kind of lock onto in VR, all right? And it's a strange feeling, but give it a try, and you'll see that it actually helps a lot with the dizziness, okay? Another thing that you can do is you could transition from a room scale experience to a stationary experience effortlessly in all space, effortlessly when you're in all space. So, like, let's say that, you know, I'm up here, and listen, you know, this is my second event today, and I've done over 300 events, and I'm tired. I don't know how much longer I can do this. I can't go on. I need to sit down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the edge of my space, right? And when I see that grid up here, I'm going to make sure I got enough room for my head to pass through. And as soon as I move my head through, my pass-through camera will go off. Or if you're using those experimental features, remember, you can do that double tap thing now, right? Where you go tap, tap, and your camera goes off, right? And then I see, oh, I got my coffee right here. Take a sip of that and throw it down because I'm a rebel like that, right? Oh, and I got my chair right over there. So I'm going to go on over and sit in my chair. And when I get over to my chair, right? Now I sit down, and as soon as I sit down there, right, what's going to happen is I have that blue button. This is when I have a stationary experience. I press that blue button, and all of a sudden I find that not only am I still in VR, but I'm still in all space. I never left, right? And it works in the other direction too, all right? The only difference is when you come in like that, your avatar is going to be lower, right, because, you know, you sat down. So you just press on down on that left thumbstick, you'll pop up, and it'll be like you never left, right? Oh, and then it works in the other direction too. Like one time I was moderating this event. And uh, there was a couple minutes left in it, and I go to step up, you know, because I felt like walking around, so I got out of my chair, and I walk into what I think is my guardian, and my quest says, you need to make another boundary, because sometimes your quest loses your position due to changing light levels, or for one reason or another, can't resolve where it is in your space, and figures it's just easy for you to draw a new boundary, right? right? But when there's two minutes left in the event, it's not so easy. So I start drawing out that boundary, right? And I'm like, why is my play space so big? I don't know. And I'm drawing it and thinking to myself, you know, of all the days to moderate for an admin, why did it have to be today? And as soon as I close that loop there, the grid comes up out of the ground, and I find not only am I still in VR, but I'm still in all space, all right? So you can be comfortable. If you feel like sitting down, sit down. If you like getting up and walking around, get up and walk around, right? Uh, you, you don't have to actually log off to do any of that, right? Um, you know, and, you know, the only difference is you might have to change your height by pressing down on that left thumbstick, all right? Um, now, there's another cool thing you can do. This isn't useful or anything. This is just cool. What you want to do, right, is if you go up to the edge of your guardian, right, and make sure you get enough room to move your head through it. As soon as you move your head through it, that pass-through camera goes off, right? Now, if you do this at the right speed, if you do this super slow, you're going to see both realities at the same time, right? And if you do it super slow like that, uh, this will give you an idea of the, the scale or the size of avatars in all space, right? So, like, you'll find that avatars are about six feet tall, and they're a lot wider than you would think. And you really don't notice this until you see them in your home environment or you, maybe your office or wherever you VR from, right? You're going to, uh, you know, get a real sense of that when you see avatars in your home space, like your real-world home space, not your old space, so, you know home space there all right now one of the great things about the quest is it just works now this doesn't mean it can't work better there's a variety of accessories that can really improve your experience like those earbuds that hang down off the sides right i don't know what i look like when i'm in vr but i like to think when these are hanging down off the sides i look fancy right like vr earrings i put these things on i went to the campfire and you know what there's a breeze in the campfire i've been in here for like over a year and nobody ever told me that right i walked over to that fence there and i heard the water rushing by right turns out there's a lot of ambient sound in all space that can the experience way more immersive it's definitely worth trying out another thing is oculus doesn't advertise this well enough but there's a breaking in period for the headset like a lot of people say that the quest is uncomfortable it's actually not it's very comfortable the only thing is when you first get it you do have to go through that breaking in period and it can take about a couple weeks for it to really fully break in the oils in your face will actually soften the insert and the tension on the spring will change and you'll find that the balance of the headset actually changes 
over time till you get to a point where you don't feel like it's on your face and it just becomes your eyes in the same way that these become your hands, right? Um, but in a couple of weeks, you know, because what happens is uh, in the beginning, people will feel that it's uncomfortable and they'll want to modify it, rightly so. They're like, this is uncomfortable. How can I make it more comfortable? And they'll get accessories like counterbalance weights or external battery packs, things like that. And, you know, then in a couple of weeks when it's broken in, the balance will shift again. And then they'll be like, well, it's just not comfortable. And I know people who have actually returned their device because of this, right? Uh, even in the beginning, I actually got a sore in my forehead from using it, right? Uh, and it broke in. And once it broke in, it was super comfortable. But if you find after a couple of weeks of use that and once it's broken and you find it's still uncomfortable, there are accessories that can help change the balance around, like the counterbalance weights or the external battery packs. Or VR cover makes these great inserts, the second one down there right uh you know and there comes with two of them right one you can wash while the other one's in use and it's really great it feels like you have a face and a pillow kind of a thing it's very comfortable and uh you know it's also hygienic because you can wash them you know which is very important today especially all right now also you have these prescription inserts you can get and this is good because if you scratch your eyeglasses and your viewer headset that can get pretty expensive all right so those prescription inserts if you wear glasses can make it a more comfortable experience for you the hardest part about that is remembering to take your glasses off when you come into vr and uh, speaking of protecting your headset, the box that the Quest comes in is fantastic. But if you're going to be traveling and moving around a lot, you want to get something like one of these travel cases right here. Because, listen, if something happens to your headset, right, it's not like losing your toaster, especially if you're coming in here a lot and you've made friends, right? Like, let's say I've made friends with TNT here, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm never going to see TNT again. What do I do, right? So, you know, like, really, honestly, if you take care of your device so that doesn't happen, all right? So take good care of your equipment there. All right, now, and if you want to give any one of these a try, right, you can go to altvr.com, and up where it says channels, right, right there, you'll uh, see all these Allspace event channels, and down toward the bottom, not that that means anything, you'll see Ravenhole events, right? And you click on Ravenhole events, you get taken to our event channel, and you'll see these products on the left-hand side if you want to try any of them out. you also see on the left side a join Discord button if you want to say hello, ask questions, help us put on events like this. And then on the top right, you'll see the very most important button on the entire Internet. That's where they keep it, right? It's the subscribe button. And when you press that, it lets Allspace know that you enjoy our content, right? Uh, you know, gives us a reason to keep on going because we don't get paid to do this. And every time we see that number uh, go up, it makes us feel good. Uh, makes us feel even better when you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And speaking of YouTube, YouTube, if you want to try any of those products, you'll find them in the link in the description below, okay? All right, now, we are going to be taking your questions and your comments. And the way we're going to do this is on your lower right, you're going to see, ooh, that's the wrong window. You're going to, on the lower right, you're going to see a uh, a raise hand button appear as if by magic because that's what magic looks like in vr right and now if you have a question or comment you press that raise hand button and you'll get on my list i'll get to feel like a radio announcer and i'll call out your name all right and before i do if you guys are on twitter and you want to follow us you can find us at underscore underscore uncanny valley i know it looks like one underscore but it is actually two all right we have a uh, wuchi wuchi san i don't know if i'm saying that right because i can't see your full name on this list because you know you cut it off and you have a question or a comment there you are in a striped shirt. Yes. What's going on? Yes. Done? What's up? Hey. Well, I just wanted to add to the um, the resetting the Oculus uh, uh, options that you mentioned. There's another one yes. that, that I found. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that you can do, actually, is you can press the uh, power button and the volume down button for about 10 seconds. That's not a hard reset. It saves all your data but it resets when it gets locked and your power button's not working. So I just wanted oh, wow. to add okay. that to college back. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a good tip. I'm going to have to look into that. Maybe we'll add that in. You know, that's that's a really good one. You know, again, exercise. I think I heard something like that being like a factory reset uh, that will also trigger that too. But I'm not sure which volume button that is. I don't know if you, it puts you like in developer mode or something like that. You know, I heard something about that. I'm going to look into that. It's actually, it's a great tip. Thank you for that, uh, Wuxi san It's really great. We also have a uh, way gamer, way gamer. Where are you at? Let's see. Right over here. Where are you? Hey, how's it going? A gamer. What's so going on? How, what were, what was the process to do a factory reset? I don't know if you said that. Factory reset. Oh, you can use the app to do that. You'll select the device, and then you'll be able to, you know, down the list of options, you'll see factory reset. But be very careful because you're gonna have to reinstall all your apps. If you have any photographs yeah. on your uh, headset saved, you're going to lose that, and you're going to have to also redo all of your settings in those apps. But it's great for an emergency. So it it'll, through, it'll, your headset so it back the way it was. The, uh, so it has to be done through the app, and you can't do yes. it on the Oculus itself yet. Got it. Uh, there is kind of a way to do it on the app. App, if you do with a uh, Wu Chan uh, Wu said, you can uh, Wu Chi San. Right. Sorry. Uh, there, if you hold down the power button and you hold down the volume down button at the same time, and you hold that down. You're going to see three buttons go up. There may be a factory reset option on that list that comes up. I don't know if they've changed it, 
You know, it used okay. to be that way several months ago, but they're always changing the firmware. But that's how it worked at one time. So if you're stuck that you can't use the app for factory reset, I would Google, uh, you know, something to the effect of, you know, Oculus Quest factory reset without app, you know, and see what comes back, right. you know, and come back and tell us about it. Cause it sounds like an interesting Perfect. topic. Thank you. All right, let's see. We also have uh, Master War. I think I'm hope saying that right. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, somewhere. hey. Um, hey, what's up? Oh, Master War. I, um, okay. That's impressive. Uh, yeah, uh, I, get, I get really easily motion sick. Uh, I can usually only teleport yes. around. Walking is very hard for me. Do you have any other tips yes. for, like, preventing motion sickness? Because, like, I do sometimes put my hands out and use the Guardian to kind of, like, ground myself. And the hand one I was testing out and that kind of worked. But do you have any other tips? Yeah, the hand thing works great for me. Like in the beginning, when I was, I actually came in uh, again, all space with an Oculus Go, and I would get very dizzy in the beginning, right? And I actually, and I don't know why it works, it just does, right? If you come over here by the bar area, right? And do me a favor, right? You put your hand on the bar, right? Now, I know you can't feel this, right? But mentally, if you feel dizzy, it will serve to actually steady you. For me, it was at a mingle and chill where I held my hand against the bush and sorry, I found it. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Yeah, awesome. You know? Sorry. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. So you do that, right? And you can kind of feel. I mean, you can't really feel it, but it actually can steady you, right? And that's what I did. My yeah. first mingle and chill, I held myself up against the bush while I was, you know, crazy dizzy. But after a while, you will build up a tolerance to it. And then looking at the hand works, uh, using the, the reality anchor with the guardian works, uh, you know, holding a wall in the real world, that'll sometimes work to steady yourself, right? And you will build up a tolerance for it, and it will gradually get better. But in the beginning, it mm -hmm. can be a little bit, you know, so you're going to have to give it some time. All right. Yeah, yes, yeah. I, using... I, I, I did read that they that they said like you get like your VR legs after like yeah. a little while of using yeah. it. So, it's true. Yeah. You do like uh, you know. There's a game out called um, was it Echo Arena, right? And I would I when I first started VR, I got a lot of motion sickness. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to play that, right? But not yeah, only can exactly, I play yeah, that, yeah. I play pretty good at, right? But it's it's a lot of motion, and I thought it was going to trigger the vertigo. And when I started playing it, it did. I got really dizzy, but I wanted to score that goal so bad, I kept going. Right, and then after a while, I just didn't get dizzy anymore. So you can build up a tolerance mm. to it. That's true. All right. Awesome. Thank Let's you. see here. Uh, all right. So we're a little bit over on time. So if you have any more questions, or I didn't call on you, all right, don't worry. You'll have a chance to ask them. We're going to the Ravenhall Flight Academy, and we're going to teach you guys how to fly if you haven't learned yet. All right. Now you can see this red uh, shiny button here. We're going to press on that, and what we're going to do is going to unmute everybody because I like to get people react to this thing. All right. I'm going to take off the stage blocker so you guys can come up on stage if you want to help me out, help me push this button. Right. We're going to, on the count of three here, we're going to, you know, put your back into it and really going to give it a good shove. Right. And when we press this, look out the window. All right. And you're going to see a Ravenhall Talon hovercraft fly by. Now, you guys can fly these ships. Here we go. Let's Raven see. Ravenhall Talon oh, hovercraft. Oh, I didn't the countdown. Sorry, guys. Well, I messed that up. All right. Look out the window. There we go. There's a Talon hovercraft. And you guys can fly that if you want to at the Flight Academy. Right. It's going to go out over the trees and land in that backyard area. Come on out and join me there. Right. And remember, if you've learned anything here today, please share it with those you come in contact with. Like, you know, if you're standing around, somebody's stuck in the ground and they go, and you go, what's wrong? And they go, I'm on a quest. I'm stuck in the ground. Tell them to press down on that left thumbstick. They'll pop up and they'll feel better. You'll feel better because you help somebody. And that's how we help keep this thing going. All right. Here he comes. All right, here Talon it is. Aircraft is now boarding outside for transport to the Raven Hall Flight Academy. Please exit the building and step into the blue light. Thank you. All right, everybody, you've been a great audience. I'll see you next time.